At the time of this recording, it is the first podcast of 2023, a new year. As much as we hate being cliche, we can't help but start to set goals for the coming year. We know the, st the statistics, or at least have a sneaking suspicion, of just how many people fulfill their New Year's resolutions. Less than 8% of people actually stick to their resolutions each year, yet millions of people, myself included, continue to set goals with high hopes of a better year ahead. We can't help it. It has been part of our human tradition since the time of the Romans, going all the way back to 46 BC. Julius Caesar changed the calendar and started it on January 1st, partially in honor of the month's namesake, Janus, the Roman god of change and beginnings. This god's full name is Janus Bifrons, meaning the god who looked both ways. It explains why Janus has two faces as a representation of his, of his ability to look back into past and forward into the future. This idea was tied to the concept of transition from one year to the next, from one vision to the next, and growth into adulthood. We have seen this time as a time of change and new beginnings for literally thousands of years. It's in our DNA. Ladies, this year, you're not going to be one of the 92% that don't reach their goals. Instead, you're going to be in that 8%. I hope you are with us because today I have two of my favorite people with me and we are going to share our top secrets to help you set and reach your goals for the upcoming year. Pam Sherman joined my team at the beginning of this year. She is part of the group coaching program on track. She hosts group coaching calls, helping our members to reach their food and fitness goals, as well as records the group workout videos each month. Pam has been a fitness professional for 25 years as an instructor, coach, and trainer. She's AFAA certified in group exercise and personal training. She is passionate about helping women make exercise a priority, especially strength training, and eat for their goals and longevity, helping women realize that taking care of themselves is not self selfish. It's self-care, as well as putting their needs first on their calendar, is so important to Pam. Her tagline is, your health is your wealth. Jessica Brennan has been working with me on and off for years, but became full-time part of the team in November 2022. Jessica started in the fitness industry about 10 years ago as a fitness instructor and personal trainer. Soon after, she realized that helping people reach their health goals was a lot more than just how much you move your body, but also about what you eat, how you sleep, and how you manage your stress levels. This motivated her to get a nutrition hormone specialist, and gut health specialist certification so she could help people tackle their health issues from a foundational perspective. Jessica's firm belief is that help, uh, health optimization is not only found just by changing things in your lifestyle, but also your mindset and realizing that health is a continuous journey of educating yourself. So welcome my two friends, Pam and Jessica. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Pam, you, you, this is like your, uh, I'm going to say your fourth fourth time on the show I think yeah yeah and Jessica this is your first your first debut into the world of the other side of weight loss yep. <laughs> but I feel like you've been part of it for so long now that it doesn't feel like this should be your first time but it is so we're gonna have to definitely have you back more now that we've you know broken the ice and you're in <laughs> you're in on it's the podcast mm -hmm. it is so ladies, as I was just saying, we all, you know, we get suckered into this every year. I think, oh, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to do, you know, new year's resolutions because it's so cliche. And then I always do because I feel that energy with the start of the new year. And I think a lot of people do, even if they don't realize it, yeah. how about you guys? Do you guys feel that need for like, oh, I got to change things up. I got to make some goals. Go, Go ahead, Jessica. Jessica. <laughs> um, well, Karen, it's so funny. For so many years, I did, and it was always, even though I'd been a fitness professional for years, I always lose 10 pounds, lose, I mean, it was always a cliche, which I never did. Now that I'm at a pr pretty, you know, within five pounds of, of my goal weight, it's more of, I want to take care of my health for longevity. So I am 55 now, and uh, there's mental illness in my mom's family and Alzheimer's. Uh, my dad died of that. And my New Year's resolution is more self-care. 
I want to implement daily meditation. And I'm not going to say every day because I don't want to set myself up for failure. That's where I think many people fall off as it's a non-negotiable. Mine is most days of the week. Set aside time to do that and explore what I can do to be my healthiest self as I age. So it's more more of a long term than just for this year. Oh, I like that. And what about you, Jessica? Yeah, um, I'm not necessarily a resolution person, but I love to pick a, a word that I really can just focus on. And like for this year, um, my my word kind of was efficiency. And um, last year I achieved so many things with, um, you know, myself and my business. And uh, this year, it's just really taking what I started last year and becoming more efficient with it this year. So um, yeah, I'm not a necessarily a resolution person, but I do like to pick a word that I can just really focus on the entire year and become better at the things that I'm kind of already doing. Yeah. Yeah. And for myself, I know that at, at the end of 2022, I was doing a lot of tracking on my health. I had an aura ring for a little while. I had a blood glucose monitor. So I was doing all these things that was kind of going into my health a little bit more like tracking it and seeing what, what these things had to say about it. And I discovered a couple of negative things. One was that my HRV was really low, uh, which just tells me that I'm stressed out. I was also sick uh, throughout the holidays. So I think that that was part of it as well. But it just kind of was an eye opener for me that, oh, I don't know if I'm getting away with things like I thought I was (laughs) with the amount that I was working and I just thought, you know what, I do need to change things for 2023 because it's now being reflected in these numbers and it's in my face. I can't ignore that. So my goals for the year are really around that, which is, you know, increasing the energy and watching that stress management because it's something that we always talk about and very few people actually implement it. And I was really thinking a lot about why that is, and we're going to get into that. But one of them is that stress is very addictive. Um, The go, go, go of it feels good when you're doing it a lot of the time where you just feel like, yeah, I'm staying busy. And when you take that time out, which I was over the holidays, there was a lot of time where I would be like, I'd get the itch. It'd be like, like, where's my fix? Where's my stress fix? Because it's literally an addiction because of all the chemicals that are being released in your brain when you are in that stress, go, go, go mode. And so I, it was a huge eye opener for me. I'm like, look at how addicted I am to just working, working, working. I have to really pay attention to this come 2023. And so that's my goal. And I've already started working on it. So I feel like I'm, I am going to reach those goals this year. So yes, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be in the 92%. (laughs) Yeah. And, and for me, like in terms of efficiency, for me, it's like, you know, getting a good planner, um, you know, making lists for myself and crossing things off and using that as my fix rather than just being in front of my computer on my phone and trying to get all of this accomplished. Like to me, when you can cross things off a list, you know, that, that to me is like, uh, even better feeling, you know what I mean? Because like yes. you said, those chemicals, those chemicals are what you get drawn to um, and just feeling important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but, true. Yeah. But, you know, um, I think about if I can, if I can accomplish even more in a shorter amount of time, like that's, that's much better, I think. And then I have more time for myself also and my family. Yeah. Um, Pam, what are, have you struggled with in the past? I think that that's also an important thing for us to talk about here today is our own issues around reaching goals and why maybe we haven't in the past, because I think a lot of people can relate with that. Absolutely. Yeah. For actually most of my forties, I struggled so much and it's, it's a typical, you hear it all the time, super restrictive during the week, have a couple beers on the weekend. And that would lead to a binge pretty much every single week. And I would even, it wasn't even every week and it was maybe two weekends a month. But those two beer, and I was not a big drinker, two beers would always send me to overeating or binging. So every year I'd be like, let's lose those last eight to 10 pounds. But when you restrict and binge, you just can't ever reach your goals. It just doesn't work. So it literally took getting hit by a car for me to change my weekends. Uh, But no, really, once I 
took the drinking away, which again, I'm not a big drinker, but my brother died of alcoholism. Um, so it's very, I did love your, your um, podcast on gray zone drinking. That was amazing. But thinking, why am I doing this? And then when I couldn't do it, I thought, I like myself so much better when I don't binge. It wasn't even the alcohol because I would never get a hangover from alcohol, but I would get that hangover from food. Mm -hmm. I'd wake up the next day with a sugar hangover. So I always struggled. I want to say for like at least eight out of the 10 years in my 40s of the weekend cycle, which I know many, many women struggle with. Yeah. And now that I'm not in it, I'm like, oh, I like myself so much better without alcohol in my life. And I know that like women are going to hear this and, you know, they they hold their wine near and dear to their heart, but it doesn't make your life better. It did not make my life better. Uh, so that was my, my biggest struggle. Mm -hmm. Jessica? But, yeah, I, I was just like adding on to what you said about does it make your life better? Um, you know, that's really a great question to ask yourself with anything, because, um, you know, being busy and, um, uh, and adding all of these things onto your um, schedule every day, like working with women, and, and when I hear all of the things that they're trying to squeeze into a day, um, you know, that's a great question to say, like, is this making my life better? Or is it making it harder, more stressful? Um, is it making my family's life more stressful? Um, you know, is it making me unable to be able to keep to my goals or keep to my routines because of, you know, all of these things I'm trying to accomplish, thinking that I'm doing a good thing, but really it's just making my life more difficult. And, um, you know, that's part of the reason that failure is so high and that 92% that you're talking about is because we start so many things at once, right? Mm -hmm. So, for me, the biggest thing that, um, you know, really keeps me from uh, achieving my goals is that exact thing is that trying to do too many things at once. And then, uh, you know, even if there is small change in all of these areas, um, it's not a big enough change for me to keep going with it, right? So, you know, to me, it's better to have focus on the one thing and see a big change so that you can keep running with it rather than trying to start 10 things. And even if you're seeing small teensy changes, it's not, you know, enough to keep the ball going, you know, and keep with it through the year, right? So, um, you know, making small sustainable changes is always a huge thing that I'm talking about with my clients, because uh, that's, that's how you maintain something, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's funny because mine is more like psychology based when it comes to reaching my goals. If I, if the goal is some, it means that I have to restrict something or mm -hmm. there's like a negative connotation that goes with it. So let's just say what everybody always says, which is I got to lose weight. I'm going to go on a diet. If I say that kind of thing to myself, like, you know what, my goal is going to be that I got to lose 10 pounds, I immediately start to associate that with pain, you know, with discomfort that something, yeah. whatever it is that I'm going to do, it's going to, it's not going to be fun. And so I immediately, it's like, I mentally put up this like block, like, nope, not doing that. <laughs> because to me, it's negative. And as most humans are, we're all creatures of pleasure. And we, we, are attracted to that. We don't want discomfort. We, we avoid pain as at all costs. So I have to be very careful with what I choose because a lot of stuff, it's like what wires together, fires together. And, and when it comes to losing weight, what fires together and wires together in my brain is losing weight is associated with dieting, which then is associated with pain. And so I have to to change how I say things or how I put things down on paper with the goal setting, because it has to be something positive. So it might just be that, you know, I, you know what, I'm just going to focus on making sure that, I, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner is paleo based eating, because I know that that's what works best for me. And that's not painful to me. And it's easy and that I can manage inside my head. And then if weight loss comes from that, well, great. But I have to change it. It's so stupid because it's like you're lying. You have to kind of fool yourself almost. But I think that this is where a lot of people do get hung up because of what it is the goal. What are the goals that they're actually setting and what is tied with those goals? What limiting beliefs, what garbage, what negativity is tied in 
with the goals that they're setting. And you have to be, so you, I want all the listeners to really think about that. You know, when you are writing down what it is that you want to achieve this year, make sure there isn't anything negative tied in with that in your subconscious. Uh, the other thing is it has to be for myself, a goal has to have a lot of power behind it. And I'm going to tell everybody how to do that today, but uh, it's something that we actually teach in the on track group as well, which is whatever it is that you're going to choose to be your goal, your resolution, what you're trying to accomplish in life. And this can be in any area of your life. It has to have a lot of power behind it because you just won't do it if there isn't. And there's ways that you can, questions that you can ask yourself that will help you to either put more power behind it or to realize you got to scrap it. And we're going to talk about that today, what those things are. Um, what do you guys find though? First of all, we've talked about what we find is hard. What do you see in your own practice with working with women? What are you seeing time and time again, you know, whether it's New Year's or any other time of the year, really hold women up? What are the most common things that you're seeing? Well, Karen, when you were talking about how you look at things, so many women, I'm going to give up alcohol, carbs, wine. And <clears throat> that just is a deprivation mindset that never, right. ever works. So I try to say, instead of giving up, what are you going to add to your life? Can you drink more water? Karen, can you eat more protein? Karen, can you add a strength <laughs> yes, Pam, training? I can. <laughs> yes, you can. Can you add strength training? So I think when you look at adding, that's a much more right. positive outlook. And it's not every day. It's well, protein is every day, but setting up daily habits that are attainable and maintainable makes a huge difference because in my experience, my clients that are the most successful, they take baby steps. They build in one habit at a time before they build in the second habit. And they keep building those little blocks up until they have a, this is the word that everybody hates lifestyle, but it's true. Once they create a lifestyle that is based around health, it's almost effortless because they've put all the pieces into place. So that's, that's what I've really seen. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, cool. and just going back to what you said about um, the pain part of the making changes. And I think that's why everybody tends to jump on these group challenges in the new year or whatever, because it seems like when you're suffering with a bunch of other people, it's not as bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have empathy and you have a bunch of people that are, you know, going through it with you. So, yeah. Um, so that is one thing, but the thing that I find holds people back the most when I'm working with them is, um, you know, it depends on if we're looking at like fitness or eating or, um, you know, stress management or what it is. And for everybody, it's kind of something different that holds them back. But I find that um, past trauma or past um, history uh, is often a huge thing. Um, you know, if they're say, for example, if it's, you know, they're eating because of uh, just as a cope, uh, coping strategy or, um, you know, say the exercise it's, it's hard to get out there and do it because you just, um, have, you have a negative, like, um, yes. you know what I'm connotation to it. Like, yes, there's, there's connotation. Yeah. Yes. There's a negative connotation yep. to it or something like that. Right. Um, it's, it's also like the frustration when people are not getting the results because they're constantly going back to the thing that they've always done and not getting results because of it, you know, uh, they think that they're doing it right, but really they haven't got results in the past, or maybe they did 20 years ago, but yes. it's different now because of their age or what they're going through in terms of stress. Right. Um, but there's also one thing that's really huge. And, you know, usually people come to you as a coach because they need accountability and they want somebody to guide them through it. But then there's no communication, you know, like some people just are really great at communicating with you and telling you, oh, I messed up today or I need help with this problem. But then you also have the people that are just like, you know, OK, I'm getting a coach, I'm getting a plan, I've got a plan to follow, but then they're not connecting with you. And that, I think, is a huge problem when it comes to, um, you know, trying to be successful because you're taking the step 
to get the coach and to get the accountability, but then you're not maintaining communication with the person that's there at your disposal to kind of help you. So that's often um, something I, I feel like people really uh, need to remember. They, they have a map and they have a plan, but they still need a tour guide kind of thing, right? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. I never thought about it like that, but yeah, you're right. A hundred percent. I have so many women that, you know, I'll see them, you know, for um, a follow-up, a month long follow-up or something. And, and they'll say, Oh, I've been running into this and this, and I had this problem. Like, why didn't you tell me? And they're like, you know, Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) No, no, this is what I'm here for. You're supposed to come to me. I'm your coach. You tell me what's going on and so that we can, I can help you to fix it, whatever that might be. But yeah, a hundred percent. That's, that's a very big one. I definitely find, you know, lack of results and that, um, the addiction to the fixing, I think that that's a big issue for women they don't stop and take into account the wins that they've had. I know, Pam, you talk a lot about this, where they don't stop to say, hey, this is what I've accomplished. Instead, they they focus on the negative because that's what their brain is used to focusing on. You're constantly focused on fixing, fixing, next best solution to your health problems. And it's like you never actually want to get better. There's this subconscious part. Now, and I know this because I've been, I I have to be very careful with my own self when it comes to this. I get very caught up in going down the rabbit holes, trying to figure out, you know, the, the next best solution to whatever health problem I might have. And I'm a researcher. I love to educate myself so I can get very swayed very quickly. And <clears throat> so I think a lot of people get into that trap. There's so much information out there right now between podcasts and blogs and the internet. And, you know, you can basically have a million different answers to one question right now when you go online. And so you can get very caught up in the chase of your health problems and not actually doing the work that need, that's needed to actually fix the problems and, right. and actually get there. So I think we all have to be very careful of that and really take it and say to yourself, okay, well, what has happened that's positive? Um, you know, before I go run to the next best diet or exercise program, is there something that I could have done more in, with this one? Um, did I give it my all? A lot of the time we don't because it's that to actually do the work is a lot harder than going out and searching for it. Mm-hmm. I think the yeah. shiny object, women are attracted to the shiny object, like the squirrel, like, oh, I'll do this one, I'll do this one, I'll do this one. But I mean, much to your point, Karen, I have every client call in my group coaching as well as I start off with what, tell me your wins. Cause women want to tell me what they did wrong or the bad. I'm like, no, no, no. And they, th- they have to like, think, I'm like, no, you- did you drink water? Did you get a good night's sleep? Did you drink any, you know, have any veggies? Do you have any protein? Like there's so many wins a day. And for women, I just say either make yourself a voice memo or keep notes in your phone of every single win, because there are so many in one day, but boy, they are ready to tell me the bad. And one thing which I meant to say on my resolutions, which if every woman could do this, it would be a miracle. Talk only kindly about yourself to yourself. We are our own worst critics. We are. Look in the mirror, you see the bad. But let's face it, at our ages, we've been through deaths. We've given birth to kids. We've been through trauma. We have survived so much. So if we only talk lovingly to ourselves, that would go a long way. Are you going to eat lovingly for your goals? When I, you know, when you're binging, you're eating like an asshole. That's not lovingly to your body. So if you approach your health with love, I think you'll get way closer to reaching your goals. Yeah, I agree. My sister, my older sister said, and I'm going to do it too. She said to me the other day that for the month of January, her focus, it's not really a goal, but her focus is going to be to not complain to herself, as well as to others about stuff, like when, especially when it comes to the health stuff. And I thought, ah, I want to do that too, because, you know, misery loves company. So when you're not feeling well and you're, or you're feeling overweight or you're feeling out of shape, you tend to talk about all the negative, right? You're like, oh, I'm so fat. Oh, I need to lose weight. Oh, I need to do this. And you tell the people around you constantly, that this is what it is that you're feeling. And it's always, you know, that 
I feel like I'm a Debbie Downer sometimes, you know, like I was sick through the holidays and I did a lot of whining and complaining. <laughs> and so I was going to jump on that bandwagon of, and that the talking to other people is easy. I can do that. I can keep my mouth shut and keep my suffering to myself, but that's just it is I don't want to also, I don't want to be complaining to myself or looking in the mirror and cutting myself down and, oh, you got this going on, you got that going on because it's so automatic for us to do that is that we're constantly seeing ourselves as these broken individuals. And I'm going to focus this month on, on trying to make that change. And then hopefully it'll, you know, continue uh, into my life. But yeah, that's, I think that that's a good one to, to have as a, as a goal, as a lifestyle goal. Right. And I think it's okay to like have things that frustrate you or bother you, but as long as you're not just constantly like thinking about them or telling people about them and not, you know, if you're not doing anything about it, then it's almost like you don't really have the, I don't want to say you don't have the right to complain about it, but like, you know, if you have these specific things that bother you, write them down, write down what you're going to do about it. What's, what's a small thing that you can do to help you to fix this problem, right? Um, you know, I always like to remind people, um, you know, if you have, if you have uh, a goal of, you know, eating better, um, take it a week at a time and just say like this week, I'm going to uh, strive to do three meals at home, you know, just start with supper or just start with lunch or just start with breakfast. Like, don't just say I'm going to I'm getting a meal plan and I'm going to do breakfast, lunch, and supper every single day, plus work my full-time job and take my kids to hockey or whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's exactly. just, it's not, it's not attainable. And then people get frustrated and, and down and I didn't, I failed. And you know, the more you fail, the more hard, the more discouraged you're going to be going forward. Right. So um, it's really about uh, being uh, specific about your goal and knowing exactly what you want to do, you know, if it's weight loss, which is always a big thing for the new year, um, the doing, uh, what are you going to focus on, you know, even if it's just starting with water, or if it's just starting with, you know, your breakfast, or whatever, you've got a whole year to accomplish this goal, you don't have to accomplish it in January. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know I mean? So it's, it's really about looking at a big picture and then kind of taking the picture apart into small pieces into like a pie, basically, and tackling it kind of one thing at a time. And being very specific, like you said, you know, maybe you have a goal of losing 30 pounds, let's say, what are we going to do for those first five pounds at the beginning of the month, and then be happy with yourself for getting to that five pounds and not just being like, Oh, I didn't lose 30 in the first month, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it's, it's about being happy with those small accomplishments because they're cumulative, right? And they they add up to something much bigger than than uh, just you know trying to tackle it all at one time or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think you know to start, I want everybody. You know, you're probably listening to this on the go, but when you get home, take out your phone or your journal or a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just do a brain dump. I always say like, just sure. get it out of your head. And so it might just be, I want to lose 50 pounds. I want to, um, you know, I want to start exercising three times a week. I want to start doing this. I want to start doing that. Whatever the goals are, just get it down on a piece of paper and then go through one at a time and really think to yourself, is this actually super important to me is there power behind this goal and if you get to one and you're like yeah I'm not feeling that <laughs> you know I put this down because I feel like I should be doing this right. but I have zero oomph behind it right. like you know I want to start cooking all my meals from home but do you you know is it realistic is it realistic is this mm -hmm. who you are like I always think you know, most of the women listening to this podcast are over the age of 35. Most are over the age of 40. At this point in our lives, we should really know ourselves and our quirks and what we can do and what we can't do. And not to say that we couldn't change things. Of course you can. But I also think it's super important to go, is this who I am? Could I do this? If I haven't, if I haven't cooked my meals from home ever, is it realistic to think I'm going to start cooking every meal from home and following a meal plan when I hate following a meal plan? 
Probably not. So is there something that you could change that to? Maybe it would be, oh, I'm going to hire somebody to cook some healthy meals for me a couple days a week. That, that would be a great place to start. Um, you've never exercised before. Um, do you really think you're going to start going to the gym five days a week without anybody pushing you to do that? Mm, no. So maybe you need to hire a personal trainer, one, even just once a week or once, if that's all you can afford, just to show you how to use gym equipment so you feel more comfortable and that you would maybe then do it. Maybe you get a gym workout partner so that you can hold each other accountable. So go through these goals, see if there's power behind them. And if there isn't, can you get power behind them? Can you change that goal to suit your personality and what it is that you know about yourself already? <clears throat> and then I want you to go through the ones that are left. I want you to ask yourself, and this is the most powerful exercise you can do, I, I think. You ask yourself, what's going to happen if you don't reach that yep. goal? We tend to just throw a bunch of stuff out, very verbal diarrhea. Like, I want to lose 20 pounds. We always want to lose 20 pounds. Like, who doesn't? Like, like Pam said at the very beginning, you know, I've got five pounds I could lose. Who doesn't? Who? What woman doesn't always say I could lose five pounds or more? <laughs> right? So if that's something that is very important to you, let's say you have 50 pounds to lose, 60 pounds to lose, what's going to happen? Not just this year, more so five years from now, where will you be if you don't get control of your eating habits, if you don't lose some weight? And I want you to think of the worst case scenario. And this is always hard. Um, something that I'll say to people is <clears throat> if you don't get healthier and you don't lose weight and you don't get control of your blood sugar, you could develop type two diabetes. And that's no joke. That's, you know, people can lose their limbs. Um, I heard of a man having to lose his penis because he had type two diabetes oh, at the wow. hospital. Yes. So that is scary. Um, Pam, for you, you have, you know, Alzheimer's in your family, as yeah. do I. So that to me is, oh, you do too. Yes. That's so scary to me, especially as I age and my brain, I can tell is aging. <laughs> I don't remember yeah. things quite as well as I used to. And, and that's scary because it's like, what if I lose my brain? And that has a lot to do with our health. They call it type three diabetes and mm -hmm. it's toxic load. It's, you know, it's estrogen loss. So what is it that we can do now to help start preserving our brain? Because worst case scenario, we die of Alzheimer's, which is pretty harsh. So think about really horrible things like scare yourself because that's a, the, these things are a reality and we don't ever tend to think that far in the future. We just are like, yeah, I need to lose weight. Well, you've said that for the last 20, 30 years of your life. And if it hasn't happened yet, there isn't enough power behind it. It's not scaring you enough. So really think about what it is that could happen if you don't reach these goals in the, in five years and 10 years and a lifetime. Um, and then think about what life looks like if you do reach those. That's another thing that we never think about. And that can really scare women because if they've been struggling to lose weight their whole life or get in shape their whole life, they start to identify with who that person is. They identify with being the overweight woman so that when she starts to lose weight, they'll actually start to self-sabotage because it gets really uncomfortable because they don't even know who that person is. It's all very subconscious, but I've been in this industry now for 20 years and I see it all the time where I see women self-sabotage themselves or the, it freaks them out when they do start to lose the weight and they've got nothing to complain about or talk about or ridicule themselves about. And I'll say to them, how often did you think about your weight? And they'll say, you know, I, I would say 80% of the day I was thinking about how I looked and my weight. And so you take that away. Then you have nothing to like, identify by. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. So really, you have to think about who are you without the weight? Who yeah. are you when you do get in shape and you become that person, the person that is committed to working out every single day. And what does that look like? How does your body feel? Like get really get into it. How is it affecting the people around you? 
your partner, you know, your relationship, your kids, your grandkids, how much of the, of a ripple effect is this going to, is this going to have if you reach that goal? So I think starting there, writing those things down, I think is most important, um, at least in my world. What about you guys, Jessica, what do you find that you need your clients to do to help them reach their goals? Uh, yeah, the why is the hugest thing, right? Um, and a lot of people tell me um, their why is about their children or they see their children going down this path as they did and they know where that leads to because they're living it, right? And they don't want their children to um, be in the same place of struggling with their weight or struggling with their health, their choices, or, um, you know, they want to impart good knowledge to their children so that they don't struggle with the same issues and I really think like if you have kids like there are their continuation of us basically that you want them to have a better outcome than you did and really if that's your number one goal as it is for a lot of women that I work with that's a great goal but you still have to be specific what do you want to teach your children do what do you want to do for yourself so that they can see that you are reflecting confidence and that they can have that as well um because you know raising confident knowledgeable children that know how to take care of their health and are advocates for themselves and um you know know that they are the ones in charge of their health and it's nobody else's you know thing to be in charge of that's a huge deal um, you know, cause ultimately, you know, we have healthcare providers and whatever, but we are the ones that are in charge of our own health. Right. So our goal should be to, to stay out of the, the doctor's office or whatever, and our kids also, and, um, you know, being able to, uh, explain to your kids why you're doing the things that you're doing and not just being like, well, going on a diet or I'm going on a, I'm starting to exercise or whatever. It's like, why, why are you doing this? And it's because I want to be healthy and I want you guys to be healthy too. And I want you to see why it's important to be healthy. Why is it important to eat more protein? Why is it important to eat your vegetables, not just eat them? And that's what I made for supper and eat it kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, those, the why, especially with kids is the most important thing. So why should it not be important for us as well to have a why, um, you know, to help us to understand why we're doing it. Right. Um, and, and that might change as you go through the year and you get more knowledgeable about, um, the, the, the plan that you're following, you know, you might start with, uh, this is my why, and I'm doing it because of this. But then you you're doing the plan, things are going well, you might have to revisit those goals or those whys that you've written down and get more specific with them, right? And um, like you said, Karen, it's not just about, you know, my goal is to lose weight, you might have a goal more so of like, you know, maybe you got a physical done, and you had some blood work markers that said this, this and this, like, maybe your goal is more to optimize those things. And in turn, the weight loss will follow or you know, those health goals will, will follow, you know, specifically thinking about, I've got to bring down my blood sugar numbers, you know, that might in turn bring you to a goal while you're working on that, right. It might bring you to, um, you know, some fat loss goals or muscle building or, or feeling better because you have less brain fog or you're sleeping better or whatever it is. Right. Um, sometimes thinking about the goals that, the the thing that's bothering you the most like say if you were you know you knew you had weight to lose but your sleep was terrible like maybe that's the thing that you should be focusing on and that in turn will help you with weight loss because that weight loss is because of something else weight loss isn't the main problem right it's because something else is not in alignment or there's some other kind of foundational problem So, um, you know, focusing on those other areas of your life too, maybe your stress is too high. Um, You know, eating might be a problem because you have too many things going on in your life, but maybe if you had more time, you would eat better, right? So um, it's really just figuring out what your main problem is. Is time your main problem? 
uh, is education your main problem? Maybe you just really don't know what you should be eating. Um, you know, what is your main problem? And then that's kind of where you start tackling, you know, yeah, and work your way backwards that. almost. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I agree. Totally. Cause people will always say, I want to lose weight, but yeah, go back figure out what it is then that is going to be your weight loss code. And I think that's where testing comes in. I think testing can put a lot of power behind your goals. Like I said, I couldn't ignore my stress levels when I saw that my HRV was chronically yeah. low. So that to me is like in my face, I can't, I have to change that because it's a fact thanks yep. to the aura ring that I know that I'm not doing great with my deep sleep and that my HRV is low. You know, my blood sugar, there was things that I was eating that was not agreeing with my blood sugar. So I've got to take those things out. I can't ignore it because I saw it. And so testing can be very helpful if your cholesterol is up, you know, if you're not sleeping well, if you are stressed out, these are all major things that will impact your ability to lose weight. So kind of taking off one thing at a time, rather than just saying, I'm going to go on a diet, I'm going to restrict my calories. Like we know how well that works. <laughs> Pam, what about you? For my clients, I really think when they set goals, I usually send them a goal sheet and they have to make an action plan to meet those goals. When you say, I want to lose weight, but you don't have any like steps to do it, you're never going to reach those goals. Yeah. Do you want to get more sleep? Well, let's set up a, you know, a regular bedtime every night of the week. If you, if it is weight loss, I would say two to three steps for every goal, but not having it like we all talked about a lot of goals, just maybe three. If you meet those three in January, you can make three more in February, but you don't have to make all the goals in January, but actually having clear defined ways of meeting them is just going to be so huge. And I've asked so many of my clients, you know, think about your why. And some are like, I, I just, I want to, they're very ambiguous. I want to feel better. I'm like, that's not going to, not when you're on the edge of, are you going to binge? Or are you going to drink too much? If you think about your why, like this is why I'm going to stay on track because of my big, you, that big why is so, so important for so many people. So if you don't know, I would say, sit down, meditate on it, think on it, journal it. Like what is going to, what is going to keep you on track to get to your belt self? So in 20 years, when you lose the weight, you're like, oh, I'm so glad I lost that weight because I love what you said. Think about worst case scenario. I mean, my father-in-law died of obesity. He was worst case scenario because he didn't take care of his health like that. I mean, we're all going to die eventually, but your quality of your life can certainly change if you take care of yourself and your health starting today. Yeah. hundred percent. Oh, yes. Yeah. These are all very important things. I think to stop chasing the quick fix. I think we get so everybody does. We're, we live in a world where we have instant gratification everywhere we look and so I think when you go into your goal setting and you put a timeline on it, make it a long timeline so that you're not setting yourself up for disappointment because a weight loss takes a while. I had a woman recently, she was like, oh, I've all, like, I, I need to do something more about this weight loss. I'm not losing any weight. And she was so frustrated. She was, she came at me angry with herself and just like, oh, I need to lose this weight. And I said, okay. Have you lost any in the last month? Four pounds. <laughs> I was like, well, guess what? <laughs> I think it was actually more than four pounds. It. I think it was five pounds. I was like, that is really healthy weight loss. You don't want to go faster than that because that typically means you're going to have rebound weight gain. Right. And I'm like, it's a half a pound to a pound a week. I know that that's so painfully slow, but that's the truth of the matter. And so I think if we kind of go into our goal setting going, okay, I'm going to work on my sleep because I think that that's really impacting my eating behavior. Uh, so I am going to take the next six months to really practice circadian rhythm um, and get myself on a good bed bedtime schedule and not eat late at night and do all the sleep stuff, right? Sleep health stuff and give yourself like six months. If you need to lose 10 pounds, once again, you move your way back. Okay, I'm going to start changing just breakfast. I'm going to take the next two months to just work on breakfast alone. And then you're like, okay, I can do that, right? And then when you reach it, you're like, yes, I did it. Rather than, 
oh, but did I lose that 10 pounds? And then you get disappointed because it didn't happen fast enough or it's not happening. But if you're slowly working on all these little things, you're moving in the right direction. And so you have to think to yourself, I get this way with working out, right? I think I work out one day hard. I feel like I should see it in the mirror. <laughs> Honest to God, I'm like, I feel tighter. <laughs> Could I not look tighter? <laughs> And it's true. I'm like, I'm the worst for that. I feel like it should be much faster than it is when it comes to putting muscle on and changing body shape. So what I started doing is going, where will my body be in one year from now if I continue lifting weights at the rate that I'm lifting? And, and that it, it instantly takes that pressure off and gets rid of the quick fix desire because yeah. it's like, oh, okay, this is going to take me a bit, but imagine where I'll be in a year. And then I think, where will I be in five years? I'll be 50. And then what could I look like? I could be in the best shape of my life at 50. I've got four years. Well, three soon, actually, just <laughs> three years to see where I can be at 50. And so when you put it ahead like that, I think it's a lot easier to embrace and be like, okay, I can take the slow and steady wins the race. I'm not looking for the quick fix. I'm going to get out of that because once again, how has that worked out for any of you in the past when you've gone after the shiny object of, oh, it's, there's this new diet. There's this new pro there's this, you know, there's that. No, just take your time and give yourself time to reach these and stop chasing the quick fix because they don't work. We can't, no. we can't lose 20 pounds in a month. Sorry. <laughs> No, and the key to success is consistency, period. That's it. And if you can reiterate, Karen, normal weight loss for women is a half a pound to a pound a week. That's it. If you lose more than that, if you get a good flu, you're going to gain it right back as soon as you start eating again. Yeah, just... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but when people say like, how long did, or how long did it take you to get in shape? I'm like, I've been working out my whole life. This is not a, it took me, I started working out last year. I mean, I'm, I'm in shape. Like it is yeah. consistency for the win in every area of your life. Yeah. Yeah. And if we, if you go into it with that headspace of that, there's an end to it, yeah. that's a problem, right? We tend to think yeah. that way about eating healthy and, and cleaning up our diet is that there's an end to, to, and we can go, then we can go back. We're going to lose the weight. We're going to suffer for this next month and calorie restrict and starve ourselves and work out like a demon. And then I can go back to the way it was. And even if you don't consciously think that that's what you're doing subconsciously, you're, mm -hmm. you're thinking of it, that it's this yeah. short amount of time. You're going to put your head down, you're going to suffer and you're going to lose the weight and everything's going to be glorious. And we do this over and over and over and over and over again. And even I have to be very careful not to get suckered into things like that. It's like, no, it's all lifestyle changes. And this is going to be something that I will do for the rest of my life. And that it'll probably be somewhat of a challenge in certain areas for the rest of my life. I mean, it's never going to go away the outside world, the right. world that's shoving really highly palatable foods in your face everywhere you go. That's never going to go away. There's always going to be Christmas. There's always going to be vacation. There's always going to be times where you're going to eat like crap, drink too much, all of that stuff. There's going to, it's going to happen. But if you can get to that place where 80% of the time you are healthy and you're eating well and you're reaching those goals, then, then that, then that's a nice little balance to have the 80, 20. It's when it's the flipped around where 80% of the time you're eating like crap or as Pam says, eating like an asshole, <laughs> that, that you got to flip that back or you got to flip that around. And 80% of the time you got to stick to whatever it is that's going to work for you and your body. And, and I would say like, don't make a change in your lifestyle or a change to your routine. If it's not something that you're willing to keep up for the rest of your life. Yes. You know what I mean? Thank you. Like, yeah. The like carnivore diet. Even, exactly. <laughs> I well. always say that to women, like, <laughs> is that something you're going to want to do for the rest of your life? Just eat yes. meat? <laughs> like think of it yeah. maybe as a short-term healing thing yeah. and then see yourself going back to including more of a variety of food. Yeah. And like really everything, I don't know. I kind of like to think of everything as being in like a phase and maybe you're going to 
think of um, reaching your goals, even uh, like if, if you thought of it, if I think about like a training cycle, even for like, you know, some of my training clients that are doing powerlifting, right? Like we do everything in a, I kind of like to have like a three month phase program, right? And it's like where the, the beginning you are, you're building strength and then the middle you're kind of like building more like power and then the end is like the month before you're you're really just fine-tuning everything and really if you're thinking about any kind of a goal in that kind of a step process where you are um it's like a phase approach where you know maybe january you're just thinking about drinking more water and cleaning up your diet a little bit and maybe starting to walk or something like that. And then month two, you're kind of going to get more detailed and more focused on things. And you're going to like, you know, increase your protein, make sure you're getting enough uh, fiber into your diet. And then maybe you're going to add one or two days a week of strength training to your walking or whatever. You know what I mean? Like just it's increasing the program, um, making sure that you're doing things at a sustainable pace Right. Um, and and making sure that y- you are reflecting where you are and being like, OK, I can do this. Um, this isn't so bad, you know, just doing it slowly and integrating it into your life rather than just like doing everything full on. Mm-hmm. Right. And and another thing that is making sure that the goal that you have and the plan that you have match each other. Right. Like really making sure that the plan that you have is going to bring you to your goal, um, you know, and in conjunction with making those changes that you're willing to sustain for the rest of your life. You know, you you might have somebody that's like, I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to have muscle. I want to look toned and fit and blah, blah, blah. But they're only willing to start like walking and they're only, you know, not lift anything heavier than eight or five pound weights or something like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's really like, does your plan match your goal? And that's yeah. a huge, or um, even like, do you have the energy? I always ask my clients yeah, that like, yeah. okay, yeah, you want to start working out, but what's realistic here? Mm-hmm. Like you don't have any energy. You're burnt yeah. out. You're working five days a week, eight hours a day. Where are you going to put this? And are you going to actually yep. stick with it? Maybe we just start cleaning up the diet so you can have more energy or shelling out some of the work that you're doing to somebody else. So you can actually start to have more time so that you actually go, oh, I have some time. I wouldn't mind going for a walk rather than, yeah, putting way too much on the, like, oh, we're terrible for that. Terrible. Human beings are terrible for that. (laughs) It's like, we think we want to do this all, but in reality, it's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Just like I, I stopped trying to meditate because I was like, I would go into all, like how you, you said, Pam, for your new year's resolutions that you wanted to start meditating more. I used to have that as a resolution for many years. I really need to start meditating. And then I was like, Karen, you hate meditating. Get over it. Move on. Know yourself. I love yoga and yoga is moving meditation. That's how I can meditate. So I started to commit myself to yoga rather than to meditation. So that's, I want everybody to do that, you know, where you can think, okay, I'm not going to do this. It's not realistic. So what can I do instead? Or what, what's a smaller step that I can reach first before that big one? Well, and Jessica, I'm laughing because I would um, write what you just said is your plan has to match your goal. I can't tell you for how many years I put, I used to make vision boards, you know, New Year's resolutions of a woman doing a pull-up. Did I ever once work on that? No. <laughs> so I never, so I never got there until I put a pull-up bar in my backyard. And then I started working on it. I'm like, I was your classic. I want it. I want it. I'm not going to do anything to get there. Like <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'll even do that about weight loss where I'm like, oh, I could probably lose Stan losing five pounds. And then I'm like, but am I willing to do what that would take? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the t- the answer is no, because it's like, I know my body, it's, it has a very hard time losing weight and I don't want to restrict myself and I don't want to work out more than I'm already working out. So I think I'll just embrace where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, come that's how I am too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like for me, uh, you, you're just, you're talking about meditation. You like to do yoga. And for me, I like to just um, make sure that I'm fitting in a walk and walking is where I think the best. And whenever I have a problem or something that I'm really having a hard time, like finding clarity on, I usually will go for a walk. I'll leave my phone at home, 
Um, and I'll just think about that problem. And oftentimes I'll have my best ideas when I'm going for a walk same. or something. And, you know, at the same time, you're kind of getting some activity in and whatever too, but um, you know, for, for, I'm just throwing that out there for people that maybe don't like yoga and don't like meditation, <laughs> but, you know, still want to have a creative strategy. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. So what are the number one thing in your guys's world that women have to stop thinking in order to help them reach their goals? Pam? They, have to, they have to stop thinking that they can outrun their fork. Oh, it does not, it does not matter how much you exercise. <clears throat> losing weight is almost all about what you eat. Right. That to think the two hours in the gym and that uh, no, no, it really comes down to you are responsible for what you eat and you have to get more protein, get more fiber, drink water. Of course, the sleep and the stress, huge, huge, but exercise really doesn't contribute to your weight loss. It's, it's all about the food. And you, you, you say that and people are like, oh, I just want to, I just want to run for an hour. I used to be a marathon runner and I was the heaviest I had ever been as a marathon runner. It just, it doesn't work. Well, Pam, <clears throat> for me, it did. Really? Yeah. Because I've always said that. And I've always thought that where like my diet has always been impeccable for like 10 or more than that forever for so long. I've always eaten really, really well. Even when I thought I was eating really well, but you know, I wasn't eating the foods that were right for me, but I still, it was still, you know, whole foods. And it wasn't until I started working out thanks to you and that, that it actually, my body shape changed and I lost weight and I didn't really change my diet. Like, yeah, I, I started putting in a little bit more protein and, but I didn't, I wasn't not, not much had changed with diet and still yeah. to this day like a year you're, and a half later. You're pretty rare because really I, I, have not, I have not found that with anybody else. And can we please talk about that for all the ladies listening? You will never get big bulky muscles if you lift weights. Yeah. You will act, my body is smaller now than it's ever been. And I mostly lift weights. Yeah. That misconception will never, ever die. Let's put down the pink and the blue dumbbells and pick up some real weights and start lifting. It's so good for your metabolism. Especially yeah. into your perimenopause and menopause years, right? Yeah. Um, one thing I was going to say akin to what you were talking about, Karen is, um, uh, because your diet was already like impeccable and like, you know, pretty whole foods, everything. That's probably why I think Pam, when you're talking about, you won't un outrun your fork is kind of like, I feel like that's a lot of the mentality that women have, like, say, if they are binging on the weekends, they'll be like, well, I'll get all my workouts in during the week. And that will, you know, help me to mm -hmm. burn off those calories or whatever, like, you know, so many people, so many women are like, um, yeah, I had some treats or I had a cheat meal or I had whatever, but then I did a real hard workout the next day. And, you know, and it doesn't, that's what I feel like you're talking about. It yeah. doesn't work that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Karen, yours was kind of just like the icing on the cake. You added the workout so. in, you already had the diet down. Yeah. Pat, right. Yeah. Yeah. And it was enough to boost up that I could actually start losing weight mm -hmm. and I, I wasn't restricting calories. It was just, yeah. I started to actually lose fat and put muscle on. Yeah. And so well, that was huge. Yeah. And much to your point, Jessica, there was just somebody at my gym on, on here's Eve. I'm working out really hard because I know I'm going to eat a lot tonight. And it wasn't one of my clients, but in my head, I was like, Oh my God, it just, it does not work like that. Our bodies don't work like that. So yes, exactly. And another thing that you have here that I think is so great, Pam, is waiting for motivation to make you inspired. Yeah. Just Every day it's hard for me to put on my shoes. <laughs> it, it never gets easier. Like, I don't feel like, you know, there's all, every... You know, there's some days that you feel like, okay, I'm going to have a good workout. You just have energy and you have good, you know, gusto going into your workout. But I would say that for me, that's only like 50% of the time. Like... I tell people often, like, I still have to put my gym clothes on and I still have to put my running shoes on just like you do. And a lot of times I don't feel like doing that or I might have a ton of work to do, you know, and I feel like I don't have time to get my workout in. But it's literally like just put the pen down, you know, put the whatever down, go put your shoes on and just go do it. And, um, you know, even if I feel like it or I don't feel like doing it, 
it's it's just I treat it like an appointment like I would with you know like any brushing your teeth I, yeah exactly yeah yeah it's and just they, routine it's important yeah right like routine takes it eliminates choices and that's what I'm t- I, yep. I'm always mentioning Can't be a choice if you have a routine then you don't even have to think about what you're doing you're just going and you're doing it because that's what you do and you know if we're eliminating that um decision fatigue like I I was saying like you know eliminate the things the amount of times you have to make a choice and by doing that you are just you know every day this is what I eat for lunch um you know for me I eat a big salad with a big chunk of protein a little bit of carbs that's just what I eat every single day so I don't even have to think about it I don't have to think hmm what I'm going to make for lunch today you know it's just every day I have leftover protein from the night before I have a all pre-washed salad and, you know, a little bit of whatever I have for a carb in the fridge from the night before. And that's just what I do every day at like 10 o'clock. I go and I do my workout. Like that's just how it is. Yeah. It's, you know, just yeah. eliminate those decisions. I would, it's so bad for that. Like where I was, I felt like I spent my whole life waiting for the energy to want to work out yeah. <clears throat> and it never came. And so then it was like, I have to shift how I'm approaching this, which is I put it in my schedule and yeah. there I block off times every <clears throat> week where this is where I'm, what I'm doing. And I, I always just say to myself when I'm like dragging my butt going, I don't want to go work out. I'm really tired or I'm, I have so much to do. That's always my thing. I have so much to do Yeah, is I always say to myself, nobody ever regrets working out, go do it because you might not feel like it then, but afterwards you're like, oh my gosh, thank God I just did that. And I think that it's so important to remind yourself of, hey, you're going to be really glad that you did this. Yep. If you, you know, and then in a month, what about if you can look back on the on the month of January and be like, oh my gosh, I consistently worked out three times a week, or like how good good would that feel if you can say that, right? You will. You'll feel great. It won't be, oh, I didn't work out enough or I didn't lose the 10 pounds. It's like actually I stuck with working out, which is massive. Yep. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A couple other things we have down on our list of number one thing women have to stop <laughs> thinking. Um, it's selfish to take care of themselves. Yeah. Pam, <laughs> look at her. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> Every woman I've ever worked with, they have so much trouble putting themselves on their calendar. And I just say, it's like the airplane. You put the oxygen mask on you first before your child. And women are amazing at taking care of everybody else in their lives, but they think it's selfish to take care of themselves. I'm like, look, you will be a better parent, better spouse, more productive, happier person when you take time for yourself. Now, granted, it'd be great if we get a massage, facial, and workout every day. I'm just talking about let's get in. And we, I meant to say this in the last segment, you don't need an hour. If you're doing no working out, let's be realistic. Let's do a 15 to 20 minute workout. Okay, let's do that every day and get a couple walks in, leisure walks, like Jessica was saying, being outside in nature without being on your phone. Although, Karen, I do listen to your podcast when I'm walking uh, is great. But just being outside, breathing the fresh air is so, so good. Make it realistic and know that nobody ever regrets a workout and the rest of your day is better, period, when you work out. Oh my gosh, is it ever? I always like by the end of the day, if I haven't worked out, I just I, I feel so down. Now I'm like, oh, I just sat in a chair or stood in front of my desk for six hours straight, seven hours straight, and never once got up to move around. That's just like, that's terrible. It's absolutely terrible, I think. Um, Okay, that's a great one. Um, We don't want people to feel they're being selfish. Right. Um, One that I I find... Is charger isn't working. Oh, Pam's charger isn't working. <laughs> but Pam, I love your 80s picture. I don't know if anybody's watching this video. You can look at Pam with her dark hair. You look very 80s in that picture. Um <clears throat> we'll watch this was like from last week. <laughs> That's a compliment if it is, because it's <laughs> you look great. Um, anyways, one thing that I find that gets women. What they have to stop thinking is it's too expensive. 
Oh. Because I know that it is yes. expensive. Even healthy eating is ex- really, this is at an all time high right now expense. Yeah. Um, getting a coach, getting a personal trainer, that's very costly. Um, getting testing done, that can be costly. There's Your health can, can cost a lot of money, 100%. But we have to start changing our brain and what we're thinking is expensive. And what we're spending our money on, because I can, can't tell you how many women I know that I talk to on a daily basis that will say, I can't do X, Y, Z because it's too expensive. I can't do testing because it's too expensive. I can't eat organic or I can't eat good food because it's too expensive. I can't feed my family. It's too expensive. And then a week later, I see them driving a new vehicle or they move and they go buy themselves a bigger house or they've got a brand new um, jacket on that's worth $400. And the, or they're drinking every single night. They're having a bottle of wine or every weekend they're going out for dinner with friends and drinking and eating and spending hundreds of dollars. But yet they can't buy a gym pass or they can't get the personal, tra- whatever it might be. So prioritize, ladies, make your health a priority, not the new shoes, you know, start seeing where it is in your life where you could maybe cut back on a bit so you could spend money on yourself and your health. I think that's very important. I just had a woman recently who had like every one of her children in hockey, which yes, we want to give these things to our children, but that's thousands and thousands of dollars. And it's like, and then she's got nothing left for herself when it comes to what she needs with her health. And it's like, <clears throat> you have to be healthy too, not just your kids. So prioritizing that. Um, another thing that women have to stop thinking is that they're broken. Uh, once again, that's something I, I, I work on all the time is I'm not broken and it's okay to work on yourself and work on, you know, improving your health and losing weight, getting in shape, all these great, these are great things, but you still, you have to stop looking at yourself as you, as though you're this broken person that is in constant need of fixing. Um, We don't want to spend our, our entire lives always thinking that we're less than, and that we're not good enough. It's just, that's no way to live. And that's something that we can really lead by example when it comes to raising children as well is to go, Hey, I'm going to lead by example here and show my kids that I have self-confidence and I feel good about myself. And, um, yes, I have some flaws, but, and then that's okay that I'm embracing those flaws. Yeah. And, and another thing that they have to stop thinking is that it'll, it'll all get fixed real quickly. Right. Um, like there's a few things that add up to that. And, and it's the fact that you may have not good habits that you've been doing for a long time. Plus the fact that you're getting older and you have, you know, some hormones possibly working against you, um, lifestyle habits, your job, um, a lot of these things, that we need to do are often working against us right so it's not going to be a fast process like especially i want to i want to really think about like when we get women working with us and they start and it's like the first month is just getting the testing and then getting the appointments and then getting the you know phone call with you to get the plan going and like this is not a fast process and you can't just get discouraged in the first month because you know you know, it's not happening like right then and right there. Um, it, the whole thing is uh, you have to look at it from a perspective of just, you know, something that's far away, but you're just walking closer to it and you're not just going to run to it, right? You don't really want to run to anything for a long time. Um, you know, walking is a much more sustainable pace. And I think that that's how you have to kind of look at everything is that it's a journey that you are walking along and um, you have support, and it's not going to happen overnight. It took you years to get there. And, um, you know, that's, that's the pace um, that is sustainable, right? It's not yeah. a race, as lots of people always say. Um, yeah. It's, it's just being patient with the process, right? And that's a yeah. hard thing to do. It's hard to be patient. I am like the least per- patient person that there is. And that's why we have that shiny object syndrome, right? Yeah. Because we're not patient. Um, 
but it's 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 really about um, you know okay this month I'm getting the testing done next month I have my appointments with Karen and then doctor and then you know then we're working on the things and that's when I'm going to start to see changes and you know this is a month by month by month kind of process right yep exactly uh, yeah, which brings us to what, of course, do we have to offer people? What's our shiny object that we're going to put in front of your face? <laughs> now, it's always good if we can tell you guys how it is that we can help you. If you are looking for, you know, help with any of this, um, the group coaching, we're all, all three of us are very involved in our group coaching program on track. Uh, registration is closed right now, but it will open back up again. You can get on the wait list to know when that happens. Uh, it's got all of these elements. We, we talk a lot about goal setting. There's um, forms that you got to fill out as far as like getting all of this, like journaling on paper of what it is that you're wanting to reach as far as your goals are. And we've got all the things for it. Uh, weekly meal plans to help with the eating. We've got monthly workouts with Pam. We've got weekly coaching calls where we'll go through your lab work and talk to you about whatever it is that you're facing. Um, Pam does one week. I do the alternate weeks. So we talk about, you know, your fitness goals. Um, we're all very, th all three of us are very involved on the community forum. So there's lots to be had there. That's a, that's a, our lowest price point that most people can afford. So if you're looking to get help with workouts and food and hormones and your labs, that is such a great option. It's been, I think this is our sixth year now coming into it, maybe even more than that now. Um, so it's been going, we've had over 5,000 women go through the group. So it's been awesome. And then we also have, as of the end of last year, we've, we are now working with two of the doctors from regenerative sports medicine, Dr. Rand McLean and Dr. Todd Kilman, and both of these guys are amazing with hormones, and they are now part of our programs. So the four-month coaching program involves uh, sessions with myself, with Jessica, as well as with the doctors for your prescriptions. So we are now able to prescribe bioidentical hormones, weight loss peptides, regular peptides, pretty much all so many different things that they can, they're doctors, so they can prescribe whatever they want. <laughs> so it's kind of the whole package. We've got it now. And uh, so we're able to help anybody that's in the United States or Canada. So if you're looking to get help with your hormones, um, please be sure to head over to karenmartel.com and you can book a discovery call with Jessica to find out more information about it. Uh, ladies, it's been a great pleasure having you both on the show. And I look forward to what 2023 is going to bring for the three of us and this business and all of the women that we are now going to be able to help that much more now that we've got doctors on board with us. And it's just, I feel like we're just so fine tuning everything and we're able to provide everything that a woman in perimenopause or menopause needs. Um, you will not have to go anywhere else. It's a one-stop shop. So it's very exciting. We have something for everybody. So ladies, thank you so much for coming on the show. Any final words? Uh, yes. Ladies think about progress, not perfection. Women are perfectionists by nature. And when they mess, mess up, I put my fingers in the air, they say, forget it and don't do anything. That step forward, that walk forward, keep on going forward because that's the way you're going to get your goals, not by stopping. Never, ever give up on yourself or your health. Yep. Yep. And to add to that, Pam, like if you are at that place of just not knowing where to turn, that's an indication that you need somebody else to look at the problem with you. Right. So yeah. that's, that's where having a coach comes in real, um, real handy and helping you to reach your goals. And, um, you know, honestly, like the three of us, we just um, want to portray to everybody that how much we absolutely love seeing women reach their goals and making those wins. And, um, you know, ultimately that's what I'm in this, um, business for is is to helping to help women reach their goals um, that gives me the greatest joy honestly I just I love hearing um, my clients wins so yeah me too it's 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 why I do what I do it's to hear these women that were in a hot mess to mm -hmm. say oh my gosh I feel like myself again you know my libido's back I've lost 10 pounds I've done this I'm like 
yes, <laughs> we've done our job. Yeah. <laughs> and it's possible, you know, there's always, there's always a solution. And I think that most women do need to hear that as you just have to find out what that is going to be for you. Each person's okay. an individual and what you're going to need is going to be different from what someone else needs that as far as diet, exercise, how to set your goals, how to reach those goals is going to be different for everyone. And I hope in today's conversation, you were able to pick up some things that align with you and that you could see yourself doing and going, oh yeah, you know what? If I did that, I think that could really work for me. So take, you know, go get your piece of paper and pen, start writing things down. And uh, I hope, I wish you the best of luck and hope that you reach your goals in 2023. And we look forward to working with you hopefully in 2023. If not, then providing you with more and more amazing podcasts and great information and education for you to better your life. So thank you everyone and happy new year.